Final week. Sisyphus. Final week. Wrapping it up. Wrapping it up with the push. I don't know if it's fair to say this is my favorite one. Mm -hmm. But this one, I love this one. Yeah. I well, really we, we kind of, we do love the sled. If, if there was one implement, I think, to invest in, it would be a sled of mm -hmm. some sort. Uh, Agreed. Yeah. So the mindset of this one. In the face of, literally in this case. So what do you think is the most valuable? Like why the sled? Why? Yeah. Well, the sled is a the sled is a beautiful tool because it's not going to push itself. Mm -hmm. And 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 you'd be like, okay, well, obviously, but it's like, okay, on a kettlebell swing, there's a phase of the kettlebell swing, the descent, where you're just like guiding against gravity. Right? Works. Yeah, gravity works. The bike, like you can kind of like just kind of barely pedal, you know. Um, the sled, if you're not, it it, it is one hundred percent. You have to do all the work, unless you're pushing it downhill. Which I'm still not sure that that would actually go anywhere. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. But like, just love it. And with that, the sled provides, I think, the most potent felt experience of resistance. Mm -hmm. um, it's approachable. It's generally low risk. Yeah. It is adjustable and scalable. Uh, for loading, depending upon, you know, obviously the surface matters. Yeah, sure. They just, but it's just so damn versatile and is consistent with providing resistance mm -hmm. in a way that's super safe. And resistance as a truth of love that if you pursue anything, anything meaningful, anything ambitious, anything you know, maybe that's going to stretch you, that's going to challenge you, you're going to face resistance. Right, right. And what do you do in the face of that resistance? Yeah. That's the big, that's the driving force with this workout, this. Sure. And I mean, all of these, obviously, because of the duration, you're, you're going to hit in all the workouts, a point of like, I don't know if I can keep doing this. Because of course, the first five minutes are, fine and but i think the sled there is um you know it's a strange one because like burpees you have to like get down and get up and it, it's like a i feel like it's like a big movement mm. the sled all requires is like can i just take a step it's very like can i just get this thing going there's this small little movement that can create some momentum and i think that's what's like really amazing about it that that's all it takes. It's, it's a low barrier to get the thing going, but to keep it going, you know, that can require really digging in sometimes. Um, so an hour of it, people might ask, this is more about the details, but to, to kind of get this out there, like, well, how heavy should I go? Should I be stopping? Should it be really light? Like, all that stuff that, you know, as humans, we have, of course, like want to figure out mm -hmm. what are your thoughts on different loading? I mean, we've done this so many times. We've actually done a two hour sled push. Yeah. Um, we've done it in different places, turf on outside, inside. Um, so there's a different experience, I think, with different options. Like, what do you think for this workout to, to guide people? I think it depends partially on the kind of sled you have. Mm -hmm. um, so if you have a sled like the dog sled that has the upright poles, that it's in front of you and you're kind of in like a plank or a push-up position. Sure. Um, you know, and with that, you're on, let's just say, you're outside where it's going to have less friction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, load that bad boy. And... We want it to be heavy enough that you feel the resistance. Right. You have to move it. It's not just you lean on the thing and it's kind of going. Yeah, if you just sort of win the which way is more math equation, uh, you'll be tired for the 60 sure. minutes. But like, 
that's again not again not wrong but you're just not going to have the more accurate potent experience that um we're looking for so first and foremost loaded to the extent that you can definitely feel that resistance for for reference of 200 pounds while we do it on a football field like the field turf stuff i put a 45 Right, because the turf on the field. Is turf on the field, there's these little rubber things. It kind of keeps sinking yeah. as you go. So yeah, you and you're that. pushing it for 100, 100 yards, right. 120 yards from end zone to end zone, whatever right. that might right. be. If it's in our gym in this space where it's just astroturf, right. no rubber things, and our span is 50 foot, put that, like, I put maybe three. Four, right, four and five. Right. You should feel from the start that you can move it, but you know you're aware that there's there's yeah. effort required. Yeah. Um, I, so I would also say to that, like, because you said something on the previous one about building, I think the sandbag. I, I would I would strongly encourage people to not do this outside their home. One, so that your neighbors don't hate you, and two, so do it outside. Oh, you sorry. Not. Don't do it just outside. Meaning, oh, like yes. on your yes. in your driveway. Go to go to a fo- go to a field. Like go to a field and take the time. Somebody has a sled. That you, you can borrow. Can borrow. So take that extra time to like try to track one down or, or a gym that's an astroturf. Um, it will be worth it. it you know, will. there's substitutes, but it's also like there's a. I don't mean there's a safety component, but like I remember back in. I don't even know when this was. Uh, it was a long time ago, the early days in CrossFit, when there weren't sleds and there was a plate pushing scenario. Oh. And I got to tell you, like plate pushing across the rubber floor, like but didn't, the best. Didn't that just burn? Didn't that just mess the plates? Yeah, up? just in your back, your low back. So like. Do you remember when we did the dumbbell thing? Yes. There's a lot of dumb substitutes, like that are not as good. Um, you know, try to locate a sled, even if it's one you have to drag. Dragging would be better than yeah. not having a sled. Um, but I think what's kind of cool about this one is, like, there aren't really any rules either. I mean, we've done this where in a gym setting where maybe it's a little more easy to do. Like, I've kind of loaded as I went. Sometimes you just keep the same weight. Um, kind of again, with a lot of these, I think what's awesome about these, they, they invite you to get outside of the kind of, okay, how am I going to do this? What's my strategy? That space into just guess we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Um, and you know, just because that's just not usually the nature of typical workouts. And if you've been doing this a long time and you've done a lot of workouts, you kind of know how things are going to feel just because you've done so many. Um, so it's kind of a cool one for just sort of being open to what happens. You might have to take weight off the sled. Like, there's no rule against that. So No, just as long as you feel. And if you're, let's just say, going to take our advice and go to a, a, an outdoor, you know, kind of football, soccer field situation, try to make it the whole way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If the first push, you can't make it past the 25-yard line. It's too heavy. It's probably too yeah. heavy. Yeah. Or then it's 25 out and back each mm-hmm. time. Yeah. But, like, we want you to push into the experience of not only is this resistance, but, like, I feel all of my muscles. And, like, yeah. stay in that. That's what we're, that's what we're operating in. Mm-hmm. Because in, outside of the football field or the turf or whatever – be. you're doing something you're going after something you're and that could be anything from like school you know that's an endurance event right um to a busy season in work like it doesn't always have to be so doom and gloomy mm-hmm. it could just be like yeah, yeah where's the like, season of life where i'm i'm kind of getting broken down a little bit and that's not because you're weak it's because you're human and that's a that's a natural force of life right. breaking things down especially when there's longer duration to it so when you're kind of marking out your distance for maybe what one span is, don't shortchange yourself. Get the experience of doubt and mm-hmm. 
yeah. like, okay, I'm going to keep pushing this in the face of my quads are burning, yes. and getting out of breath. And yeah. there's actually a really great tool we use a lot um, in the gym with workouts called coherence, uh, also sort of connected to, you know, the therapeutic space. Um, but that I think is a, a great tool to bring into this workout where it's really about acknowledging kind of going through the system. How do mm -hmm. the legs feel? How's the lungs? Where are my lungs at? Where's the heart rate? Mm -hmm. What am I thinking? And kind of cycling through that and trying to get those areas to kind of align. Yeah. Not having, often people have an experience where like, oh my gosh, my heart rate is out of control or I, I can't breathe. And trying to just be aware that you're coming back to like, a cadence where those things are sort of aligned mm -hmm. and just that very similar to life. So you're just needing to maybe regroup, reorient, mm -hmm. take some inventory and then keep going. Um, because on the slide, you will for sure have the experience of like, wow, my legs are really, you know, this is like, I'm feeling my legs or, yeah. And not panicking, but just adjusting and, and accepting. Uh, no, I won't be feeling it. Yeah, it won't feel it won't feel pleasant. Right. It's not a massage. So we know that. Yeah. So there's no surprise. Sure. Like you know it's not gonna feel pleasant. If it was taken out app. That's would, gonna be the next gauntlet. The next gauntlet is gonna be the Slisophus <laughs> gauntlet. Sleep -ifus. Yeah. So, you know, you kinda know that. And then, you know, one of the things that like in the face of, or maybe another way I, I viewed this personally with things is like greet it. Mm -hmm. You you know it's gonna burn. Right. You greet that. Don't look away from it. You greet it. And part of the purpose of these workouts and why they're an hour. You do one heavy slip push and you're like, oof, that was hard. Right. And that's good. However, like giving yourself the time to just kind of have those layers of the mind kind of melt away. And we don't really do that often. The yeah. longer workouts. Right when you start to hit the little, the, oh, I don't know, it's over. This cake takes you through much like endurance. You know, anyone who's done a marathon or th those types of efforts, you have different emotions. You have the opportunity to have highs and lows and feel in the course of an hour, you might feel there are moments where you're like, this, I got this, this is awesome. And then there's also going to be moments where you're like, I, I can't. Mm -hmm. And the, the span of that is what we love because that, that cycle and just learning that there's going to be ups and downs and just allowing yourself to ride through it and yeah. what you do with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and something that I've been more conscious of or more vocal about with others and with myself too is that um we'll take specifically with sled and i like to do sled workouts we like to do sled workouts mm -hmm. where it's it, more of like a strength sure situation yeah. where it's it's real heavy and you hit that point with a sled where you're like i'm pretty sure every atom in my body is 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 releasing ATP and trying to generate energy That's for me to go. Coming out my ears. That's what, it what does that feel like? There was one where I Brains was coming out of your it ears. just like, uh, there's so much, there's so much active and, and effort that it feels like it's weeding out my ears. There was one where I almost, it was, we were, I almost thought I might, it might not make it, but I had come so far. I was like, I'm going to die trying <laughs> So yes, that is like the heavy effort where everything in your body is working to get that thing. Yeah. It makes you work progress. Yeah. That's not necessarily how this is going to go for an hour. Yeah. No, it shouldn't. Right. Because you can't do that for a full hour right. or you can't do that for the majority of an hour. And that's a, uh, you get three sets like you would do at one RMX back swap, sure. back swap PR. However, even if, so from that, even then to this, there's a, there is a resiliency piece to this. There is yeah. a, there is a strengthening piece to this and when I'm in an effort like that with the sled, whether it's maximal or like long distance, mm -hmm. I'll just bring to my awareness, aided through the, the somatic feeling, the mm -hmm. physical feeling, that really is the sign to say, this is what getting stronger feels like. 
Right, right. Yeah, because if you don't feel any of that, you're not getting stronger. No. It's it's a necessary piece to, to that progress. So when you know mm-hmm. you feel that, that's great that you're like, wow, this is working. Yeah, this is what getting yeah. stronger feels like. This is, that's, you know, that is huge. Yeah, I heard you say the other day to someone, like, you don't feel strong if they like weights. Yeah. You know, so you meet some of that, that resistance, whatever that is. So, um, yeah, I think this one, we, I mean, I'm, it's an awesome one to kind of end on. Mm-hmm. If you think it's very empowering. I think so. Um, so while maybe the other weeks took people on a little bit of a ride and, you know, hopefully you had a range of ups and downs and, you know, it's not all, you know, that, that's the values that you were challenged. But this one, you can really end with that strong, strong, mm-hmm. like, feeling. Yeah. I feel like that's something on the sled that most people feel strong on it, exerting their effort on it. Yeah. Yeah, it's good stuff. Well, have fun. 